Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 Mods Weekly, the show where we take a look at some of the really cool and interesting mods to come out in the past week for Fallout 4. And this week, to some people's disappointment and maybe to some people's pleasure, we have a whole lot of weapon mods. Actually, only weapon mods this week. I know you guys want to see more variety in your mods, but this show is about showcasing the last week of mods, and this week we just had weapon mods, and there are a whole lot of them. But on the bright side, we have a very nice variety of weapons. No two weapons on this list are alike. Each one of these fits its own unique role and is very, very special in its own way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in with the first mod, which is the Battlefield 5 M1918 BAR by Zest of Lemon. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Browning Automatic Rifle is a classic weapon used in World War II by the US Army, and this thing is very, very neat. And I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for a really nice BAR mod for Fallout 4. There have been a few attempts in the past, each of them with their own benefits and drawbacks, and this one is no different. This one has some really crisp and clean reload animations, though it is kind of lacking in terms of attachments over at the weapons workbench. There is not a whole lot of customization for this weapon. No new barrels, no new stocks, not even any new magazines. It's really just some receiver upgrades and two sets of iron sights. Additionally, this weapon is not available in the leveled list. The only way to obtain this thing is to craft it at the chemistry station or spawn it in via the console. One neat addition to this weapon is the multiple fire rate options. You do have semi-automatic, fully automatic, and a fully automatic fast option. You can actually change the rate of fire by changing the fire selector on this weapon, which I think is pretty cool. One small thing that I did happen to notice while playing with this weapon is A, there is a lot of weapon inertia when using this thing in hip fire, as is kind of typical with battlefield weapons. You can just wiggle this thing around a whole lot, but what's really interesting is all of that inertia goes away as soon as you aim down sights. Vanilla weapons actually have a little bit of inertia in both hip fire and aim down sights, whereas this one really went all in on the hip fire and in aim down sights your weapon stays completely still, which just for me personally is kind of jarring when using this weapon in combat. That is totally just a preference thing, so if you like still iron sights, which I think most people should, this is definitely a plus for some of you. As far as stats go, this thing performs very very well in combat, boasting a lot of damage that doesn't get nerfed when you increase the fire rate. Altogether, for those of you who are fans of the Browning Automatic Rifle, this is definitely a good option as it does have some very, very nice models and textures as it is coming from Battlefield 5, as well as some nice crisp and clean animations. Now then, let's move on to another mod that we have this week. Funnily enough, this one comes also from another AAA title, and that is the Black Ops Cold War Nail Gun by Cadaver. This is going to port over the nail gun featured in Black Ops Cold War. Now, personally, I haven't used this one, as that is one of the Call of Duties I did skip out on, but this is a very nice model, and I think it's perfect for a game like Fallout. Nail guns are actually a cannon weapon. This isn't the exact model that you'd see in Fallout, but this is definitely something that I could see existing in this universe. Surprisingly, this thing does boast quite a bit of attachments over at the weapons workbench, including some different muzzle devices like the ability to light your nails on fire, and even a bayonet made out of even more nails. On top of that, there's even some unique variants that you can find out in the world at different locations. As far as the regular version of this weapon is concerned, it actually is added to the leveled lists, but it is still pretty rare, only appearing as quest rewards and on legendary enemies, and it only starts spawning after level 15. Alternatively though, you can purchase it from a vendor or craft it at the chemistry station. As for the unique variants, you can actually find a standalone version of the regular weapon over at Hardware Town. You can find one of the uniques known as Puncture Wound over at the Milton General Hospital in the basement. You can find the Soul Skewer at Poseidon Energy and the Corpse Puncher at Revere Beach Station. Although, you're really going to have to look for that one because personally, I couldn't find it. This weapon does feature completely custom animations made by Cadaver that look absolutely beautiful and the sound design on this is pretty excellent as well. Altogether, I think this is a great little weapon for Fallout, definitely something I could see raiders and settlers alike using as an improvised weapon. Super, super cool, awesome stuff as always by Cadaver. Up next, we have a pretty interesting little gun known as the Homemade Submachine Gun 2, the HM Tech SMG by Outrora. This is a neat little makeshift weapon inspired by the Boar's SMG, and I gotta say this thing fits perfectly in Fallout 4. This thing does boast custom animations as well as a good bit of customization over at the weapons workbench, including some different rusty and oiled up parts that will not only change the performance of the weapon, but also how it looks visually, which is pretty neat. This thing also comes with a ton of optional files that you can customize this weapon even further with, including levelless injection and even tactical reload. 
Now, something very important to note is that with that leveled list patch, it is a direct edit to the pipe gun leveled list and will be incompatible with anything that does the same. It does not use scripted leveled list injection, so that is very, very important. But it doesn't come with the base mod. It is an optional file. Instead, if you just get the base version of the mod, you will craft this thing over at the chemistry station. Another pretty important disclaimer about this mod is some of the required files in order for it to function. First of all, you are going to need the Tech 9 mod by Retro Paladin, as it does make use of its animations and will require it as a master. Another interesting requirement is the West Tech Optics Pack mod by myself. I'm not really sure why this is a requirement considering it is an open perms mod and the author could have easily just implemented all of these assets without needing it as a requirement, but they didn't appear to go that route, so you are going to need to download that for those scopes to function. All that stuff aside though, this is a very fun little makeshift SMG, it does use 38 caliber rounds as its base just like the pipe guns, and it does offer the same sort of experience you would expect with an early game pipe gun. It's very high fire rate and very low damage, but with upgrades, it actually performs pretty well in combat. Altogether, this is a perfect little weapon for Fallout 4 and one that I enjoy a whole lot, so go ahead and consider checking it out, it'll be linked down in the description along with every other mod in this video. Moving on to our next mod, we have a brand new revolver known as the Modern Warfare 2 Basilisk by Alphaca. That's right, another AAA title port. We have the Basilisk, a wonderful new revolver featuring a whole lot of damage. This thing in-game is chambered in 44 caliber, but it does pack a pretty huge punch and has some recoil to boot. This thing does, of course, come with custom animations and a whole lot of customization over at the weapons workbench, as all of the parts from Modern Warfare 2 have been added in this mod, allowing you to do some pretty crazy stuff, including different barrels, grips, scopes, lasers, etc. Sadly, this weapon does not come with levelless integration and instead is found as a one-of-a-kind variant over at Fort Hagen. But to be honest, you probably don't want this thing shooting back at you as, again, it does pack quite a punch and it only gets stronger with the attachments over at the weapons workbench. This thing does also feature a whole lot of different ammo types that you can craft, including armor piercing rounds, full metal jacket, overpressured, and snake shot, which is always a fun one, allowing you to add a little bit of flair to this revolver and allow it to perform a bit differently. Now, one thing, this weapon does come with some minor drawbacks. In its current version, there are a few scopes that are missing their scope overlays. So if you try to use any of the long scopes, you're going to be looking at a whole lot of nothing, which is kind of a shame. But I'm sure that it's something that will be fixed very, very soon. It is a very easy patch to make. So if you're looking for a brand new heavy revolver, especially one that fits a bit better in a modern theme, the Basilisk is definitely one I'd recommend checking out. Now, moving on to something completely different, we have the Institute Plasma Defender by Mikolov, one of the few weapons that we actually did do a full breakdown of on the channel earlier this week. This thing is a whole lot of fun. This is a recreation of the old school Plasma Defender, but with an Institute twist, featuring a lot of the same sort of design methodology, a nice big boxy plasma weapon, but now it has been recreated by the Institute, and altogether I think the design works perfectly. The Institute style is already super boxy, and this is no different. But in this case, I think it fits really, really well. It's not as oversized as some of the other Institute weapons, and in first person I think it looks fantastic. Now a quick little disclaimer about this mod is that the base version does require munitions for the newly added electron charge pack ammo type, but there is a non-munition version in the optional file, which will of course convert it to fusion cells. This weapon is actually added to the level list and will start spawning on synths after level 20, so you can actually find some different plasma weapons on synths as opposed to their typical blue lasers. This weapon is made out of entirely vanilla textures, so any retexture you have will apply. In the case of this video, I am using a black Institute weapon retexture. Additionally, though, any Creation Club skins that you have will also work on this weapon, which is pretty cool because you can customize it to be with whatever faction you prefer. Altogether, this makes for an awesome new lore-friendly addition to help beef up the Institute arsenal, and as of now, not only is it available for PC, but Xbox One as well. Now, the next mod is, surprise, surprise, another weapon, and it is known as the Handmade Rocket Rifle by Degenerate DAC. Oh yeah, that's me! I did create a nice little secret weapon mod, and I wanted to showcase it here, as I typically do in all of the weekly recaps. Much like the homemade SMG that we featured earlier, this one is a very junky, scrappy aesthetic, clearly made in somebody's garage, out of some lead pipes and scraps of wood. And altogether, I think this weapon is a whole lot of fun, and very fun looking, and in my opinion, very Fallout looking. This is definitely something I could see a raider or settler coming up with while high on chems and looking for a way to dispose of their rocket surplus. 
This weapon will make use of tweaked double barrel animations featuring a small edit by Diacute to remove the shell ejection. That way you don't eject a fully loaded rocket in your face despite having just fired it. And it is going to also feature some new assets from my asset pack. This thing is 90% vanilla with a mix of my custom assets from the asset pack and only two items in this are custom, meaning that the file size on this is very, very small, coming in at only 20 megabytes. This weapon is also going to feature levelless integration, appearing in the world after level 8 on raider bosses, gunner bosses, and the occasional Minutemen, making it pretty rare, but a nice early game alternative to the missile launcher if you're able to find one. Speaking of missiles, the ammo type for this thing is intended to be the Fallout New Vegas rocket featured in munitions, but that isn't quite out yet. So as of right now, this will use the vanilla missile launcher as its ammo type, but it does actually have a rocket projectile with custom explosions. But once Munitions 1.1 does come out, there will be a version that will utilize the correct ammo type, that way the balancing is a little bit more what I envisioned. Until then though, the missiles work just fine. You may have a surplus of missiles laying around, and now you have a new way to expel them. Additionally, there is also a unique variant of this weapon out in the world known as the Exposure Therapy, and you can actually find this over in Virgil's Cave. This is going to be very similar to the base rocket rifle, except it is going to add a bunch of radiation damage and fire many, many nukes. Not many nukes, many, many nukes. It's still just a rocket, but it has the explosion of the mini nuke, which is pretty cool. Altogether, I did my best to balance this thing as an early game explosive weapon, which there just really isn't an option for in Fallout 4. But now, there is. As of right now, this thing is only on PC, but I hope that somebody will port it to Xbox soon. If you didn't know, my uh, ability to port has gone away since the CK absolutely hates me. So, anybody who wants to take up that task and put it to Xbox is welcome to, and uh, hopefully that will happen sometime in the near future. Now finally, that is going to take us to the last mod of this week, known as the Paratrooper Rifle or the Bullpup R91 by Pig and J Cruz 05. Anybody familiar with the Fallout 3 Assault Rifle, also known as the R91, is going to be quite pleased when they see it is now available as a Bullpup. Or maybe you won't be pleased, I don't know, I guess that's really up to your opinion, but regardless, this weapon looks really, really cool. Another wonderful Bullpup conversion by Pig. This one, instead of taking on that scrappy aesthetic, actually has a pretty cool looking, believable pre-war look. This thing features a ton of customization over at the weapons workbench, including a bunch of different stocks, some of which give it a pretty cool, unique, junky aesthetic, and it even has a ton of scope options, barrel options, muzzle options, and even a couple of skins. This weapon is actually added to the level list and is only added to gunners, and it'll start spawning in the world after level 10, and there's actually an in-lore reason as to why this is. There is a newly added dungeon featured in this mod that the gunners have moved into in the Glowing Sea. There you'll find a unique version of this weapon known as the Infiltrator, and additionally, you'll find a little bit of background on this thing. The idea is that a lot of these weapons were being housed in this bunker, and since the gunners were the ones that found it, they are the ones who have access to this weapon. Another very important feature on this mod is that it does come with custom animations, specifically the AUG animations by War Daddy, which look really, really nice. Altogether, I think this is an excellent implementation of a lore-friendly bullpup, and I'm very, very happy with this weapon. It definitely has a permanent spot in my load order. With that, though, I think we can finally wrap things up. A whole lot of weapon mods this week, but they were all absolutely excellent. If you want to try any of these again, they will all be linked down in the description below. And while you're down there, consider dropping a like if you liked the video, and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. As always, a big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video, and a very special thank you to Avian4, Captain Chaos, Freedom, Glasma, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Kid Hades, Cushy, Logan, Rig Maiden, Microhan, Moonlit Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Starling, Steven, Timmy76, YouthRC, and Voider for joining that Tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!